Hello everyone, welcome to this material characterization course. In the last class, we just started looking at the sample preparation techniques for uh, transmission electron microscopy. Then I just gave a brief uh, description of each techniques uh, right from the uh, mechanical thinning to uh, jet polishing and then we have just gone through the complete procedures. And today we will continue that exercise and uh, we stopped in the last class with the uh, dimple grinder. So the dimple grinder is typically used for uh, ceramic materials or uh, any non-metallic materials where this is a pre-thinning exercise before an iron milling uh, operation. So I just stopped uh, in this point yesterday somewhere here. As you just see that uh, your sample is just mounted on this stage and then you have uh, the ceramic uh, slurry is there and then you have the grinding wheel and then the disc is keep on rotating in order to produce a dimple in the center of the a 3 mm disc. And uh, the thickness of the dimple is measured in this dial gauge. Uh, so typically you remove uh, every micron thickness you will be able to monitor through this uh, dial gauge. And then you have the uh, control over the RPM of this the disc which is a grinding wheel and so on. And this is some typical uh, sample which is being demonstrated where you have the, uh, I think it is a metallic specimen. Uh, just for a demonstration purpose we have taken. Just see that uh, uh, this is a dimpled specimen, this is an undimpled specimen. And uh, before, uh, just go back and then uh, I would like to show the, the difference between the, the dimple specimen and undipple, undipple specimen. So what you, what the exercise what you are now just witnessed uh, is the sample is stuck on a aluminum stub with a glue and once the dimpling is done, you have to reheat the stub in order to melt that glue and then you remove the a sample and uh, you can see the uh, clear difference between the undimpled sample and a dimpled sample. It is the, the dimpled region here is slightly offset. Uh, that means the alignment uh, what we have kept on the stage as well as the, the disc is not exactly correct. So it should be in the center. Nevertheless, this can be used for uh, further thinning in an uh, iron miller. So that is the information I just want to give before I proceed to a next uh, technique. So the, the next technique which I am going to demonstrate is uh, called uh, ultrasonic disc cutter. This is called ultrasonic disc cutter. This is one uh, uh, very specialized tool to prepare a 3 mm disc of a slice of ceramic material in a very rapid fashion. So you can have a close look at it and the uh, what, what this machine does is you have the, the a tool, it is a, a tubular um, a tool which cuts the a sample with the abrasive slurry and the high speed. So this high speed is achieved in this uh, a cutting tubular tool through an ultrasonic, uh, uh, you know, ultrasonic vibration with a frequency of about 26 kilohertz and so on. Typically it is a, it is the, the vibration uh, high speed action or I would say the high speed uh, activation is done through a, a piezoelectric uh, crystal and um, where it produces uh, a high frequency uh, vibration. And with the uh, ceramic slurry which is there on the specimen on the, the glass plate here which will just cut through the uh, material with a localized erosion action. So that is the basic function. And then you have the, um, 
you have the facility to you know reduce or increase the frequency and this is the stage you can just move up and down and uh, you can see that tool very closely. So, and here again you have the uh, dial gauge, you can prepare a samples with thickness to few microns to few uh, one or two mm thick ceramic material can be made into a 3 mm disc. And this is a, a very uh, important tool for uh, ceramic material and in some cases uh, people use it for metal also as well, but normally it is used for only ceramic because in metal you use it with the uh, disc punch and each one is about a 10 micron uh, division. So, you have you can control the micron thickness. So, in order to do this cutting you put the ceramic it is typically a boron uh, carbide or nitride or silicon carbide and then um, then what you you should do is uh, you take out the sample after the it makes the local uh, cutting with which produces a 3 mm disc in a uh, ceramic material. After that again you have to go to the uh, dimpling action which produces uh, a further thinning and then it finally goes to the iron milling. So, now what we will do is we will go to an iron milling action. So, we will take up the iron milling exercise. The again I have taken only a metallic sample for a demonstration. So, it could be typical ideally it should be in a ceramic uh, material. So, you, you assume this a material of this 3 mm uh, disc and then you can take it to the um, iron milling and before you uh, put it into the iron miller you should know how, uh, how this specimen is uh, being mounted into the specimen stage where it is uh, being thinned by uh, iron miller. So, we will just show you some of the details of how the specimen is uh, held in a, a specimen holder, it is called uh, Dio Post, uh, which is commercially available from the um, supplier, machine supplier. So, you have this uh, uh, this specimen holder called Dio Post I said and you see that uh, there is a clip on the top of the, you can see the both sides there is a clip and this is the holder on which the Dio Post gets inserted like this. And then we will now show you how to load this sample in this Dio Post and then later we will take this whole assembly to the uh, iron miller. So, it is very delicate machine, so it requires little more uh, uh, practice to use, otherwise you will spoil all this uh, very uh, sensitive uh, region and that is how the specimen holder is locked in the specimen stage. Now, we, what we will do is we will put the uh, 3 mm disc what is being prepared from the ultrasonic disc cutter or a, a disc punch. We will put the sample and then we will demonstrate to you how it is being locked. So, you place that uh, 3 mm disc on this lever and then you can nicely or gently push this lever with the tweezer which will just go above this uh, locker, I mean locker sh locking pin and then you have to make sure that the specimen is being held by these two clips. For that this is helps, this, this knob helps where it can open and you can adjust it and uh, nicely you hold it with the clip. So, for that demonstration we will do it again. So, now you tighten it, so that it will hold this 
um, yeah, now you can see that it is nicely lifted. That means it is being held by these two clips and now you can remove this uh, lever. Now this whole thing is uh, ready for uh, an iron milling uh, system. So the DO post assembly is taken with the sample mounted on the, uh, the clip. Now we will see how we can load this into the uh, iron miller. So this is the uh, typical iron milling equipment where you have the, um, the stereo microscope through which you can monitor the, the milling action and you can have a closer look at it, how it appears. And uh, you have the two guns, left and right hand side gun. If you recall the, the presentation which I made um, on this iron miller, you remember that there are two guns, one is top and one is bottom. So you have the left and right gun. Uh, these are the two guns and some of the instrument, instrumentation details we will go through so that you will have a feel of uh, what is happening in the iron miller. So you have the uh, specimen stage um, on this and then you have the left and right gun current indicator here. So now we will uh, try to load the sample into the machine. So uh, before uh, we do that exercise, uh, we should also uh, remember that uh, for this kind of milling, the, the thickness of the specimen which is after the iron miller, or sorry, uh, after the ultrasonic disc cutter and dimpling, it should be less than 40 microns or 30 microns. Then only this system will work. If it is too thick, it is going to take a lot of time. In fact, that is not correct to the correct way of using this equipment. Uh, please remember, you have to have very thin specimen after the dimpling, at least 30 micron to 35 to 40 microns maximum. So, so you have the iron gun gas flow control here. Uh, then this is a, the current indicator of the two guns and then you have the beam energy also been uh, shown in the display. So what we are going to uh, do is, this is the specimen stage and which is completely kept under the vacuum. So you can just have uh, whether it is uh, before loading or after loading, you have to control this vacuum and this is the airlock control for the specimen stage. You can bring it up for the loading the specimen or bring it down to mill, mill the specimen and so on. And this is for vacuum and this is for venting. Before we open the chamber, we have to vent it. And you have the RPM which can be controlled, that is a specimen rotation. And then you have the, this is a time clock. You can program the whole uh, milling exercise. And this is how the, the specimen chamber will look like in an iron miller. So the DO post what uh, which is holding the, the, the dimple grind, ground specimen which will be mounted on this stage and this disc will rotate. That is the RPM which I just showed uh, will control the rotation here. So now you are seeing that uh, the DO post is 
going to get fitted onto this holder. So, it requires little more uh, uh, practice before you uh, get used to uh, doing this whole exercise without damaging the sample as well as the equipment and so on. Uh, they are very delicate uh, small uh, devices which uh, requires quite a bit of a care to use them as well as maintain them because they are also very expensive. Uh, so, you need to have extra care to handle this. So, finally, uh, we are uh, loading this sample that the DO post assembly like this. Okay. Now, it will be enclosed from the top for the vacuum and you have the glass window to see what is happening to the specimen. So, now you pump it and then uh, it will get locked. So, now you can um, what we are doing is pumping and once the vacuum is done it becomes tight you see that you are not able to move it. So, it is uh, ready for the milling now. Now, we can set your uh, parameters what is the time and what is the current or what is the angle of the beam uh, whether you want to use uh, a single gun or a double gun uh, both all those things to be decided beforehand and uh, in this exercise we will see we will use both the guns. Now, you see that specimen stage has gone down by using that airlock uh, knob switch. Okay, you can now see that we are showing that action moving this duo post assembly to the top as well as bottom. Now, it is taken inside and in fact, you can completely view the whole thing through a stereo microscope which is uh, mounted on this. We will see that I will show you how to use that. <coughs> so, now the specimen is uh, going to thin and now try to we are trying to set up the time as well as the, the gun angle. Please remember the uh, very important aspect of uh, the gun angle is depending upon the angle your uh, specimen thickness I mean the, the thinning region will be decided. If it is too high an angle it will be a problem. You will have a narrow thin region will be produced. If it is a very small angle it will produce a large thin region uh, that is to be uh, understood. So, this is just to show you the shutter action because uh, with specimen we did not show that shutter. So, once the specimen goes down the shutter will close this chamber and uh, you can and if you if you want to monitor the action of the thinning then you open the shutter and then look at the specimen situation through the uh, stereo microscope. So, again uh, we are doing vacuum. Specimen is going down with this uh, airlock control. We are switching on both the guns 
left gun as well as right gun. So, immediately you will see the corresponding the current and we are setting it for some time and uh, we can adjust this to required thinning. Normally, you give uh, a few minutes, uh, half an hour is typical to give and depending upon this specimen nature, it will take a uh, few hours to I mean, I mean half a day or so. So, now the milling action started and then now you will see the, the current of these two guns and the beam energy. This also can be uh, controlled and typically this is the KV you use for thinning uh, a typical metallic sample. And metallic samples are used uh, uh, in this used in this milling because some of the uh, you know alloys will have very sensitive to electrolytic polishing where you have the second phase particle which may fall out during the electrolytic thinning. They are uh, being polished with this iron miller. So now you can see that uh, the two beams are uh, falling on this. Yeah, now all the lights switched off, you can see that uh, iron beam which is being um, being bombarded onto this sample on both surfaces from top and bottom. So, from this camera, you can only look at this angle, but if you actually look at the stereo, uh, stereo microscope from the top, you will be able to see both and bottom and uh, uh, top beams which is coming. So, now we I think uh, we have cut short that uh, the full time and we will now try to remove the sample and then show you what, what kind of uh, precautions you have to take before you remove the samples that we will see. Um, in fact, this milling time uh, suppose if after 30 minutes, you can also give some additional uh, milling time by changing the angle in order to remove the or clean up some of the uh, debris which is being produced. So, higher KV you must have chosen, but you can do a lower KV also and you can clean the sample for a few minutes with the changing the angle that is normally done. And uh, if you look at uh, the sample which is being milled now, it is only a metallic sample and uh, I will just uh, try to take out the sample. You are bringing the stage up and then you have to vent so that the you can remove, you will be able to open the chamber. You have to be extra careful uh, with the tweezer, you have to remove this dio post, which will be little tight enough because you have, you have put that into the holder also with lot of uh, stress. Okay. So, now it is being removed and uh, you can see and there again, if you want to remove the specimen from this uh, DO post, you have to go to that uh, specimen holder. Uh, initially how we loaded this uh, foil a similar fashion, you will be able to remove them using that uh, stage and you can see that there is a, a perforation in the middle of the foil. So, now we can just put that sample into the microscope for the examination.
and you can also do uh, after this a plasma cleaning which will also clean up uh, the uh, surfaces and uh, which will be finally uh, ready for the examination. Okay, now I quickly what I will do, I will uh, show other important uh, sample preparation technique uh, called uh, ultra microtomes. And as I mentioned in the presentation, this particular technique uh, is used for polymeric materials and this is the this is how the equipment would look like this is a ultra microtome uh, it's very uh, very useful equipment for polymeric uh, sections preparing your polymeric thin sections again you have the stereo microscope on this top and uh, this this has got uh, two important uh, part of this machine. This is the specimen holder arm and this has got uh, a, a, a stage where you, it can move on this lever and you have the specimen stage here. This is a specimen stage and you have all the uh, gauges to control the stage movement, left, right and top, bottom and so on. And this is the uh, specimen holder. You can open this and then put the specimen corresponding specimen inside and then lock it up into the arm. We will show the, the typical action of the cutting and then uh, we will proceed with the actual demonstration. Uh, please remember uh, in order to use this equipment, either you if you have a bulk sample, you can directly uh, machine it to a such a way that it can be held in this holder directly or if your specimen is too small, you have to mount it on a polymeric material and then fix it. I will, we will talk about it in a few minutes. And then you have the, uh, the controls, control panel you are seeing. You have, uh, since it is a kind of a cutting tool, <coughs> you have the, uh, the speed and the feed of the material cut to be controlled. Uh, that is what just we have seen in the uh, display panel. And you just see that uh, this is how the, the the cutting action will go. You see that it, it just has the free play and then finally it just press it with a controlled manner. Then the arm will just cut against the, the knife. Then your thin section will come out. So this is the knob with which you can control the action of the uh, specimen arm and also the, the feed and the speed of this arms can be controlled with this. So they, these two movements have uh, synchronized. Yeah. So this, this is how the cutting action will go, go on. Have the step size in uh, 100 nanometers jump and then you have the speed mm per second and feed of the material, what is the you know material you want to cut at the one time that those things can be controlled by this and also you have the uh, presets, you can choose any one of them, it will cut directly with that. For example, 1 mm per second will give you 50 nanometer, 70 nanometer, 200 nanometer, 1 micron and so on. So you have all this set available to choose. And uh, yeah, so this is how the specimen cutting tool is fixed. This is a, a glass knife which has got a, a boat fixed on this 
cutting edge. So, you can now see it, yeah, this is the glass knife and now we are trying to fix the uh, sample in the specimen arm. So, what you have to appreciate here is, here the sample is uh, mounted with the polymeric uh, resin. So, this the inside is the sample which is having a different color and it has to be uh, made a cone shape like this in order to uh, you know facilitate the cutting. Now, the specimen uh, will be cut with this uh, glass knife. Basically, you have two types of uh, blades, one is glass knife as well as a diamond blade and uh, the gla glass knife is you can always uh, make yourself and now you will see how the cutting ac action proceeds with this uh, micro tome. Please look at this, this is a, a boat with uh, a water. So, this is the cutting edge of the glass knife, the material is going to get plunge on to this knife and uh, depending upon the, the feed rate of whatever we have chosen, it will be your thin sections will get cut and then it will float on the water and the specimen will be taken out by uh, fishing by a copper grid from the bottom with the help of a tweezer and that can be dried after that and then it can be used for the microscopic analysis afterwards. So, that is how it goes, but uh, you will now witness the, the cutting, cutting action. Yeah, now one section is ready. The next section is ready. This the current uh, uh, section has got the thickness of 100 micron, which you will not see in the with your uh, naked eye. But uh, if you look through the uh, stereo microscope, you will see that the thin section, which is coming and uh, floating on the blow boat. So, uh, how to prepare this glass knife? The glass knife will have some limited uh, life and this is a, a knife maker. We will also show you some of the actions of how to prepare a glass knife. So, that it is a regular consumable. So, you, you get uh, a lot of glass uh, strips from the sup supplier. So, this is a very simple uh, device which perfectly makes the glass knife. So, we will also show you how to do that. So, take uh, a strip like this. So, here we are going to clamp this into this machine, this is a knife maker. So, that will be very interesting to watch. So, you basically tap it and then make sure that it is aligned properly and now you make a a perfect scratch on the surface and then now apply a load. Then it breaks that glass perfectly into two pieces with the sharp edge. You can see that. Yeah, now you can see that it is very sharp. Uh, What we require is a, a triangular knife, for that you need to cut this uh, strips into a very perfectly square piece. Then the square piece can be cut in diagonal, diagonal manner to in order to get the knife of the required shape. So, this is the same action, you can see that uh, it make it produces a, a sharp scratch and then then load and it becomes two. Now, one of these pieces will be uh, used to produce a final glass knife which is being used for the sectioning the polymeric material.
yes now you got a, a sharp edge knife which can be used so after a few uh, experiments this uh, the edge will uh, lose its sharpness that is why it is uh, consumable so every time you feel if you want a very sharp uh, knife you prepare it like this and uh, and you can produce a very beautiful uh, polymeric sections using this tool and that is uh, very important and another important uh, uh, aspects i would like to uh, mention here is uh, after sectioning this polymeric material uh, some of the material requires uh, some staining uh, chemical staining in order to produce uh, better contrast even for optical microscopy people use uh, these sections and uh, some of the polymers requires a staining operation which uh, i am not going to demonstrate but just for uh, information uh, for the completion of this uh, uh, presentation so you have to uh, look at the, the requirement of uh, what kind of information you want in what kind of a polymeric material so the staining is another important uh, specimen preparation technique uh, which is required for uh, microscopy analysis now the uh, all this sample preparation techniques are uh, very uh, important techniques and uh, very i mean i would say that these are the state of the art technique available today for the transmission electron conventional transmission electron microscopy studies and uh, if you uh, now we have to, what you have to uh, understand is how this uh, specimen is loaded into the tm and for that again i would like you to uh, go through the uh, laboratory demonstration which we will do it and for that purpose uh, what i have done is i have requested our uh, senior uh, technical officer in our uh, transmission electron microscopy mrs kanchana mala she is uh, has a tremendous experience in operating this equipment so i just requested her to uh, give a demonstration instead of uh, me doing because she is she also uh, like to do this and she is very good at it so i wanted to give her credit so what i suggest is after this the the tm demonstration uh, you go through uh, mrs kanchramala's uh, demonstration which i will uh, give it after this video and what i suggest is you just go through that video and carefully observe how the tm is operated uh, to in order to obtain a, a bright field image a dark field image a diffraction pattern how the dark field image is produced using a gun tilt and uh, all this basic information you just observe in that video and also you just if you have any doubts you note down and you can always contact me about the uh, mission operation details and in that demonstrations we have also added uh, two kind i mean another microscope one is uh, 120 kv uh, microscope the another microscope is a 200 kv microscope where you will be shown uh, demonstrations where a very uh, nano materials for example if you have the carbon materials where you you like to see the the lattice fringes or the the carbon tube uh, multi wall characteristics and so on just to give you a flavor up how the high resolution images are produced in a, a conventional uh, transmission electron microscopy so i i rec i request you to go through both the sections of that demonstrations and get back to me if you have uh, any doubts through email and so on so with that uh, i'll 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 finish all the uh, laboratory demonstrations i hope you will find it useful and you will have you will be immensely benefited from this all this demo laboratory demonstrations thank you